Hey guys, Will here with Create Studio, and in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create an iPad swipe animation inside of Create Studio Pro. All right, so let's take a look at what you're going to be creating. All right, so we've got the jack animation, we've got an iPad that flies in, and we've got it sliding across some images here with our text animations flying up from the bottom. Um, so we've got three images, right? And you can utilize this with video or images. Um, so let's go ahead and delete this, and let's go ahead and get started. All right, so I've already got my background built out, so I've got my desk, my chair, and my actual background here. Um, now I need to add our animation. So let's go ahead and go to our studio, and then under characters, I'm gonna search for Jack, all right? So here is Jack here. If you haven't downloaded your character animation that you wanna use, make sure you click the download icon in the bottom right corner there, and then once it's done, left click and drag it into your canvas, all right? So I need to change the animation that Jack is utilizing right now. So right now he's using the wave, if I look down here in my timeline. So I'm gonna select him, Come over here to my settings under action one. I'm gonna click on his first animation here, which is wave. And I am looking for his swiping tablet animation. So I'm gonna select that. And so now I'm gonna extend out his uh, swiping animation to be this about this far. And now if I play him back, you'll see that he pulls out his iPad and then he starts swiping. All right, so I'm gonna do is I'm gonna reposition Jack so he's about right here. So I'll select him and then move him about right here. So it's always readjustable later if maybe you wanna change his placement. All right, so our next step is to add the images that will then swipe across the iPad as Jack swiping across his tablet. All right, so let's go over here and go to media. I've got some saved photos here. Now I'm gonna drag in my first image, which is gonna be a picture of the desert, right? I'm gonna drag out this image to the length of the rest of my tracks, right click it, rename it, and let's just call it Sands of Time. All right. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and group this. So I'm gonna right click it, select group, and then let's rename this group and let's just call it screen. And now let's go inside of here. And then let's go ahead and take our sands of time here. And we're gonna go ahead and add a scale keyframe animation to it, all right? Now the first thing I wanna do is I wanna go ahead and scale this up a little bit more. So I'm gonna go ahead and go to my settings, go to properties, and let's go ahead and scale it up pretty large, right? Because we're going to do a scale out on it. So let's set it about uh, 163 is pretty good. All right. So on the keyboard, I'm going to go ahead and hit the S key, right? And then on my first keyframe here, I'm going to then select my in and out of my easing and choose linear. And then with my first keyframe selected again, I'm going to come over here and it's going to stay at our scale 163. But I will then select our second end keyframe here and I will change this to be 153. How about that? We'll just go down by 10. All right. So now remember, the closer together your keyframes are, the faster your animation will then play. The scale will happen. If it's farther apart, the slower the scale is going to be. So let's start about right here, and let's just see what that may look like. All right. It's a little bit of movement. We can probably speed that up just a little bit more. There we go. Looking pretty good. We got a little bit of subtle movement there. It's all about the, the fine details, right? All right, so there we go. We got some movement. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and right click this guy and I am gonna group it and then we will call this uh, start from the top or from the bottom to the top, right? So this will be screen three actually. All right, so now I need to add two more pictures and I'm just gonna duplicate the same process I did for the screen three with screen two and screen one. Um, so I'm just going to do this real quick on the fly so that we don't have to watch me do every single step, right? But the process is the same um, for screen three as it is for however many screens you want to put in there. All right, so now that we have all of our screens created, what we need to do is we need to add the iPad frame to our session here. All right, so let's go back to the main timeline. Uh, let's go back to studio, and I've already searched up an iPad, so I'll scroll down, and I will drag our Apple iPad into our session here. All right, let's go ahead and pull our iPad to the zero line and then maximize it so it is the length of our screen here. Now so I can go ahead and rename this and we can call it iPad frame if we want right there. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna group my iPad frame with my screen group and then I'll rename this group and we can call this iPad master. All right, so far so good. So let's go ahead and double click inside of our iPad master and let's scale up our iPad frame, right? So right now it's a little small, so let's go ahead and just scale it up here in our canvas window, all right? So, so far, so good. 
and I can go ahead and bring it up a little bit if I want. There we go. All right, so now let's go ahead and click on our screen and then I'll click mask in the right corner here. All right, so what I'm gonna have to do is I'm gonna need to, to drag these down a little bit. I'll round out my edges, right? And then I will go ahead and just scale down um, my images here, right? So that way it fits within the iPad window and then we're good to go. All right, there we go. I can even zoom in a little bit, look at my corners if I need to. And you can see that there's a little bit of white right there. So I can just kind of pull that back up right there. And then let's see what we got down here. Looking good there and looking good there. All right, so we're pretty good. So we've now masked our screens to our iPad frame. So we're looking pretty good. So now let's go back to our main timeline and see what we got. So look, there it is right there. We've got our iPad and then we can always move this around and put it right here for now just to keep it um, out of the shot there so we can see Jack. All right, so now I need to create some keyframe animations to make the swipes across each picture happen, right? So let's go back into our iPad master and I'm gonna find, actually I'm gonna go back to my main and find the part where Jack actually swipes for the first time, which is right there. So he does a little swipe right about there. So now I'll go back into my iPad master, go back to my screen and on this first picture here, I'm gonna go ahead and select uh, P for position and on the first keyframe, it's gonna stay the same for my properties, right? On the second keyframe, I'm just gonna drag it across screen here so it's out of sight. All right, so now what I can do is I can kind of see what the timing of that looks like. So that looks pretty good. Now what I can do is I can then uh, put my cursor right as that swipe ends, right? Maybe about right here. And I can go to screen two, and then I can see where my scale animation's happening, right? So maybe I can start it about right here. That makes more sense right so now when i go back to the main timeline you'll see that jack gets his stuff together and he swipes across and then we've got some motion going on there and then the next animation is going to happen about right here right he's going to swipe his finger across so i'll find that spot right before he does it go back into my ipad master and then go back into my screen and then again on screen two i'll add a p for position keyframe animation and it's gonna stay right where it is there for the first one. And on the second keyframe, I'm gonna again position him off screen again this way. All right. And then what I can do is I can go into screen three now, right? And then I can pull my scale animation to play more when this is gonna happen now, right? All right. So as I can already see though in this one that we are a little bit too scaled uh, in there. So what I can do is I can select my first keyframe here and let's scale this up a little bit more. So that way we've got room to grow there. And cool. All right, so now if I go back to the main timeline, we will see that Jack then swipes across and she should swipe right this way. And then he's scaling in there, which is nice. And then we've got some animation there and it's looking pretty good. All right, so now we need to add a little bit of animation to our iPad, right? We need it to fly in. So let's go ahead and uh, move our cursor down to the beginning of the iPad Master. And I'm going to select iPad Master. And let's go ahead and select Add Animation. And then we're going to select Position and Rotation. All right. So what we're going to do is on that first keyframe, I'm going to select it. And then I'm going to come over here to my Properties. All right. And I'm going to go ahead and just punch in some manual um, positions, right? You can drag this off screen if you want to, but I'm just gonna go ahead and on my X, I'm gonna go ahead and put about 1603 there. And then on my Y, I'm gonna select 65, all right? And then what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna change my rotation to three, all right? And on my 3D rotation X, I'm gonna make it, uh, it's gonna stay zero, but my Y is gonna be 30, all right? And then once I hit enter there, it changes my perspective and it changes it to about 88, which is fine, all right? So now I'm gonna select my second keyframe, all right? And I'm gonna to go to my properties again. And under position, let's go ahead and go for 66. And then on my Y, I'm gonna go ahead and choose negative 56, all right? Now I can adjust this later as I need to. Um, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to go to my rotation, it's gonna to go to zero. My 3D rotation X, that's gonna go minus 24. And then my 3D rotation Y, I'm gonna make that about minus 18. All right, my perspective is going to be at about 18 minus, uh, sorry, 88%. All right, now I'm going to go ahead and drag this so that my 
first endpoint is starting right as my animation starts. And let's kind of see what that looks like. There we go. Looking pretty good, right? And then he swipes and we've got some good motion going on. So what I can do is I can select this still too. I can take my, my first keyframe here. I can move these over and select it. And then maybe, um, or actually let's go to that second one. Maybe I want to move this up just a little bit, right? Like just, just a hair, right? You can always readjust it by doing that, right? So now when I do this, there we go. It's looking pretty good. All right, so now let's add some text. So let's create a shape and let's create a rounded rectangle here. I'm gonna go ahead and change the color of this to be black. And then I'm gonna change the opacity to about 38%. And then let's go ahead and scale this down manually and then have that fit inside of our iPad frame here. All right, so once we've got a good sizing here, um, let's go ahead and then add some text. So I'll add, click on the text here in the top and then let's go ahead and move this down into our text box here. And then let's line it up so it's centered. Double click in here and it's gonna stay Nanito and then we're gonna keep the weight black. We're gonna change the color to white though. And then our line height, let's make it about 105. All right. Um, so what we can do is let's rename this to be, uh, we'll just call it, um, we'll call it text one. And then that way we can just duplicate this to create the same thing over and over for the next few slides, right? Um, so we've got text one in there. Um, what we can do is we can even uh, scale down this box a little bit so it fits our text um, size here so it's not so much extra space. All right. And then now what we can do is we just add some quick motion animations, right? So to the rounded rectangle, we're gonna go to motion, we're gonna go to scale, and I'm gonna go to elastic up, all right? And then on my out, under motion out, I'm gonna go to position and we're gonna go to bottom, all right? So now I can just copy these and then paste, copy and then paste, and that's command V. So command C and then command V on the keyboard, right? So now it, as it comes in, we'll have the text fly up. So we'll have it start about right here. And then it will then, as that disappears and swipes away, the text one is gonna fade away. So we can go ahead and then just do this right here. Right, boom, and looking pretty good. All right, we can even speed that up just a little bit. There we go, looking nice. So now all we have to do is just duplicate these and then line them up for each additional slide that we have or however many pictures you may have, and then we can then uh, solidify the animation, all right? So let me go ahead and do that real quick, and then I'll come right back. All right, so now that we've added all of our text and duplicated them for text two and for text three here, and lined them up properly, um, we can now play back and see what we've created here. All right, so we've got our iPad slide name, we've got text one popping in and out, text two, we've got Jack swiping across his tablet, and then we've got our text three animation text that comes in, right? So that is how you can create a really cool swiping tablet animation inside of Create Studio Pro. Hopefully you've got some really cool quit tips out of here. Can't wait to see what y'all create and I'll catch you on the next tutorial.